Okay, hello everyone. It's Alia or Cake Legend here and today is another real-time cake decorating video except instead of the silence I'm gonna be talking to you guys <laughs> because last time I was doing one of these videos I thought what if I just said all my thoughts out loud instead of just staying quiet and that's what we're doing today so here we are I know a lot of you guys enjoy these videos and I'm so happy about that because they're so easy for me to make whenever I'm decorating these cakes it's usually not usually it's almost always for the to-go cake fridge in our storefront so that's why they always kind of look similar in every video because I have to keep them in the same level of simplicity and I have to follow like the same style do the same kind of colors that's why they're never very dramatic but I always try and make them a little different every time I try and do something that's a little more fun so that it stays entertaining but I know a lot of people like them just for the the ASMR aspect of it I guess and just hearing like the fridge in the background and sounds of my tools which I'm glad about a lot of you also ask in every single video what kind of buttercream I use and this is American buttercream which is just butter and icing sugar basically and some water to thin it out and I do have a recipe on my channel. If you guys check my recipes playlist, it should be like one of the first couple videos. But the way to get it very fluffy and smooth is just by filling up your mixing bowl all the way to the top and then mixing it for like a good 10 minutes or so. And all the air bubbles will turn really tiny and it'll become very smooth and you will be very happy. It's honestly one of the most satisfying parts of my job. And I love it. Whenever I decorate these cakes, I'm also pretty much making up the designs as I go along. But like I said before, it's always something similar to what I've done in the past. So I just kind of start and then see what happens, basically. I know that's probably a really bad explanation, but that's what I do. Oh, there's chocolate on this bag. I always have all the buttercreams prepared beforehand and I have them sitting on a tray behind me. I used to not show that part, but in some of the more recent videos I do show you guys what the workstation looks like before versus after decorating all the cakes. Someone once asked too, how do you do your border so fast? And I honestly don't know. <laughs> I guess it's just experience, I'd say. I've been decorating cakes for almost six years now, and you just kind of get faster as you go along. Oh, spilled a little bit. And in my six years, I've pretty much mostly done baking. I did also go to pastry school and learn a lot of other fancy stuff, which is fun. 
but cakes I think have always been my favorite thing to do. I also always do this with the buttercream before I mask the cake because I like to fill in the little gap that's there just so that I don't get a big air pocket underneath the buttercream after I've masked it because I've had that happen before and it's very unsatisfying. One of my coworkers once asked me too, how do you stay so quiet in your videos? And sometimes I'll have my wireless headphones or earbuds and I'll just be listening to music while I do this. But sometimes I forget them at home and I just sit in silence while I, while I decorate. Kind of relaxing. I also only film these videos when I know I'll be by myself at the shop so that I don't have to force everyone else to be quiet. And nobody wants their conversation possibly recorded and put on the internet anyways unless you're doing a podcast. I also think skipping the crumb coat is so easy and so fast. If you guys watch my videos, you know I literally say it in every single cake decorating tutorial. But in these videos, I do get comments sometimes saying like, What? You didn't crumb coat your cake? And yeah, it's just fast and easy and cool. When I was in pastry school, it was actually in one of our quizzes. The quiz, the question was like something like, how do you save time when cake decorating? And the answer was to skip the crumb coat and just ice your cake in like a thick layer of buttercream and then scrape it off until it's nice and thin. And I was like, ha, I knew it was fine to do that. But the weird thing is, the first year I was in pastry school, when we did cake decorating, we had to crumb coat all of our cakes no matter what. Actually, I changed my mind. Actually, I'm changing my mind again. I'm use this. Uh, in my first year of pastry school, when we did cake decorating, we had to crumb coat all of our cakes, not on the cake board. We had to do it directly on the turntable and then put it on the cake board so that we could put it into the fridge. After it was chilled, we had to take it off the cake board and put it back on the turntable, which we had to clean while it was chilling since it was all dirty. Uh, then mask it in buttercream so it got dirty again. Then put it on the cake board and then like do our border and everything and I was like I had already been cake decorating for a couple years at that point doing what I'm doing now pretty much and I always thought this is so weird this is like so much extra work and it takes so much longer and we also weren't allowed to use an offset spatula and a scraper we had to use two straight spatulas a big one and a small one and I remember asking my instructor why we had to do all these things and she didn't have an answer she actually had to go ask another instructor and that instructor said 
it's just a more skilled way. So I guess, yeah, it's cool to learn it that way too, but really in practice, nobody's going to do that. But if you do do that, good for you, as long as you're like fast and comfortable with it. I was still able to decorate my cake perfectly fine. It just took 10 years longer than it normally would have. Sometimes I feel like the thing that takes longer is the prep. Getting all the buttercreams ready and having all my cakes ready to be masked and all my piping bags filled. Sometimes that takes longer than the actual decorating. Blue. I used to play this cupcake decorating video game on the internet when I was younger called Papa's Cupcakeria and it was so fun and you got to like run your own little cupcake shop and make the cupcakes for your customers as they came in you had to do it fast so that you got a good score. And I always wonder what younger me would say if I could go back in time and tell her that's what she was going to be doing as her job in the future. Because this job is so fun sometimes. Sometimes it's stressful <laughs> and a lot of work is always a lot of work, but it's just so fun. Just decorating cupcakes in the morning and then putting them all out on the trays so that the shop looks nice and beautiful for when we open. Wow, I actually didn't spill too many sprinkles that time. I always feel conflicted when I'm throwing sprinkles at a cake and like half of them are going onto the table because yes, I'm wasting sprinkles. I'm gonna do Yes, I'm wasting sprinkles, but one of the first things my boss taught me when I started working here was to not be afraid of making a mess. And that really did help me become faster at doing what I do, because I just wasn't afraid. Like, okay, I'm gonna spill a couple sprinkles, but it's gonna be totally fine not the end of the world and you can just clean up your mess after so can you imagine how much longer this would take if I was so careful about not spilling a single sprinkle that'd be insane accidentally put a little too much coloring in my pink buttercream today so it's a little blinding but it's fine it'll just be fun I used to always flick gold 
paint onto the sides of my cakes or I would like paint the top edge and I thought it just made them look so elegant and so fun. But then the price of our gold powder went up and my boss said we can't use it on the to-go cakes anymore. And it was a very sad day. So ever since then, I've been trying to figure out ways to like just bring them onto the next level without having to use something like gold. I do always like to use pearl sprinkles, um, which some of you may have noticed on like half of my cakes I'll always do like uh, the little white ones and then the bigger white ones. So that's just my favorite combo. But if you guys have any other suggestions on things I could do with just buttercream and regular sprinkles, <laughs> let me know. I would also do more drips on cakes, but drips take longer to do because I have to go melt the candy melt and then grab a bag and then fill it up. And if I didn't have it ready before I started recording, then I know it's just like, whatever, I just won't do it. Unless I have lots of time. But on a day like today, I only have like half an hour or so to do this because then I know one of my coworkers is gonna come in. And I'm not going to tell her to be quiet so I can film my video. So I'm just doing what I can do in that half an hour. But usually during the day when I have time to decorate more to-go cakes, I'll try and make them a bit fancier. Unless I also don't have that much time at that point, then I have to do it really quickly. Sometimes when I decorate cakes during the day, they end up being a decorating tutorial. I'll have that little bit of time to make them a little extra fancy and I can't really put the audio into the video because it's just gonna be like the sounds of mixers and people talking and the doorbell going off and the phone ringing so instead I wipe the audio and I do a voiceover I'm always so careful about not stabbing the cake with my finger. Since I've done that twice now, it's always whenever I open like a fresh pack of cake boards um, the day before when I stack the cakes or when somebody else stacks the cakes and then I know it's really flat and it's hard to get your fingers under there. These ones are okay.
I kind of want to film another video of me attempting to decorate a cake in one minute. Because so I tried it once and I just couldn't do it. I think I got less than two minutes if I remember correctly, but I couldn't do it in 60 seconds. And it's because the masking takes a whole minute at least when I'm trying to be super fast. I'm not trying to be super fast right now. I'm just going at a relaxed pace. But you still gotta be somewhat fast, especially because my cakes, I like to decorate straight from the freezer because it really helps with the no crumb coat. Whereas if they've been in the fridge sometimes, they're a little bit softer and then it's easier for crumbs to come off and get into my buttercream when they're not supposed to. But when you pull a cake straight from the freezer, you gotta make sure you decorate it pretty quickly or at least mask it pretty quickly because the coldness is gonna set the buttercream really fast. I don't know what to do for this cake. I think it's so funny how people have such mixed opinions on leaving the raw edge on the cake. I personally think it's cute. I like the trend. I think it's fun and it can look really elegant sometimes. But some people absolutely hate it and will say mean things like, I would never buy a cake that looks so unfinished like that. Or I think one time someone said that um, I would fail pastry school because I left the raw edge on the cake. I don't remember if that was a YouTube comment or a TikTok comment, but I was like, ha, well, I passed pastry school, so joke's on you. Oh, I just realized. Okay, sometimes I <laughs> sometimes I think, okay, I'm gonna do this specific thing in my head. Like for this one, I was like, I'm gonna do a blue rope border, but then I didn't because sometimes I'm just on autopilot and I do something else. And then here we are. That's happened before too. I did a, ch a cake that was chocolate with raspberry filling so I iced it in chocolate buttercream on the outside and I was gonna do like pink pearls on top to represent the raspberry and I was on autopilot and then I grabbed blue sprinkles and put those on instead and then I was like oh no what do I do Sorry, I keep going back and forth because I didn't grab all my sprinkles before I started recording because I wanted to hurry up and start recording. But yeah, that chocolate cake, it's in one of the videos that I posted. Um, I think it was the last one to sell that day because I did the blue sprinkles and then I was like, oh no, what do I do? So then I just put the pink sprinkles on top and it looked very strange, but somebody bought it. So that's good. Mm, I'm going to 
do some that's kind of fun I would put cherries on top of this cake but we're actually experiencing a cherry shortage at the moment, so I'm not going to. Instead, I'm gonna put just a little red heart. There, that's kinda cute. Actually, I'm gonna do that. There. This buttercream has more air bubbles in it because I always do the blue cakes last, which means the buttercream has been sitting on the counter this whole time. And the longer it sits, the less like smooth and satisfying it becomes because all the air bubbles are like settling and expanding and rising or whatever happens. That's just what I assume happens because <laughs> it's so creamy and smooth when I take it off the mixer but then after like half an hour it needs to be remixed to get it perfect again. Like right now it's not too bad I'm able to work with it but did not look like, like the white buttercream did not look like this because that was like fresh off the mixer and then I hit record and I started decorating. Forgot to wipe off the cake board. Get all those crumbs out of the way. Oh, sorry, everybody. <laughs> So what do you guys think of me talking in this video? Was it pointless? Did you enjoy what I had to say? Is there anything you wanted me to say that I didn't? Because I could do another video like this. Or I could just stay quiet for all the videos to come. I kind of don't know what to talk about anymore. I feel like I experience the same situation when I am doing voice recordings for some certain videos and I'll say what needs to be said and then after I'm like now what do I talk about there's so much footage and I either end up just leaving it for a moment of silence or I'll just speed up the clip so that there is 
no pause between the takes. I don't know what to do for this. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do, I used to be so bad at that, and I'm still not the greatest at it, but I have definitely improved. Oh, people also often ask me where the turntables are from and like some of the tools and the answer is I have no idea because I didn't buy them. <laughs> they were already in the bakery when I started working here like six years ago so I'm sorry I don't have an answer for you. come in and see all of my cakes in the fridge and think, wow, those are all so beautiful and amazing. But instead, sometimes people look at the fridge and go, is this all you have or do you have more cakes coming out soon? <laughs> and I'm like, there are eight beautiful cakes in front of you. Well, there's six here, but there's already two out there from earlier. And you're asking if we have anything else? It's okay, I get it. It's not everybody's style. Oh my God, I forgot I have a whole bag full of white vanilla buttercream. So I think we're gonna have to do white on this cake. I hate it when this happens. This happens sometimes when like the buttercream is so fluffy and light. And I put so much on the top and then it just doesn't stick to the cake. And then it gets crumbs everywhere. And it's so not satisfying. I'm actually compiling 
all of the unsatisfying clips from videos like this and one day I'm gonna put out the video unsatisfying cake decorating compilation <laughs> I don't know if people will love that or hate that but either way I want to see it <laughs> So this clip might be in there. I definitely already have a clip where that happens. Sometime soon I'm also going to put out like a a 10 hour video of this stuff because I've been also compiling all of these videos into one big file so that I can put them all together and you guys can enjoy so I know a lot of people also like to have this on as background noise which I get Usually for my background noise, I'll play songs, but like movie instrumentals, because I love listening to those. And they have no lyrics, so it's nice to have it in the background while I'm doing work or something that requires thinking. I also like those videos that have like um, the sound of rain in the background. I think those are fun too. Let's make this one a little extra fancy. Well, it's not that fancy, like I've done this before, but I never really do it anymore because it takes a little extra time. <laughs> but we will today, in honor of the video where Alia speaks instead of staying quiet the whole time, somebody tried to get into the shop. That never happens when I film this. I just hate it when I'm filming these and then the phone rings. Because whenever I film these, we're closed, obviously. And I always think, didn't you have to Google our phone number? And when you did that, didn't you see that we're closed? <laughs> Why are you calling? So we don't answer the phone until we open. Actually, I know some bakeries that do answer the phone while they're still closed, so. But what I don't get is when they try calling and we don't answer, and then they continue to try calling. I think once we actually had someone call like 10 times before we opened, and obviously we never picked up and then when we finally did open they didn't call at all <laughs> so weird so 
so cute. I'm gonna do sprinkles in the middle too, not on the border, just for a little contrast. two are really unsatisfying. Okay, and we're gonna finish it off with a cute little pink heart. I thought I was going to accidentally stab the cake again. Okay, and now for the final part where you guys all get to see the cakes in their newly transformed state. I think out of all of these, my favorite is this last one we just did. However, the star sprinkles are also so adorable. Let me know which one you guys like. And if you enjoyed this video, here's my big mess, my tripod, and my buttercreams. Um, but yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye.